Hello you guys and welcome to this relationship chat and another Ash Chantel video. If you have questions as always feel free to email me at ashchantel at gmail.com. Go get your mug because we're about to chat to Melanie today. Let's get into her question. So Melanie is a newlywed and she is 21 years old and she wants to know how to communicate with her spouse. She says that she hasn't had a whole lot of great examples of marriage and she just doesn't know how she should approach communication and arguments that arise, you know, as a newlywed. Melanie, I'm so glad that you asked this question because there are so many of us that deal with challenges in communicating with our spouse whether we are a newlywed or you know soon after that and so I've got some information here for you that I feel that would be helpful if you guys have advice for Melanie leave it down below that's what we're here for we're here to offer each other support but if you have questions as always you guys know you can email me at ashchantel at gmail.com that is a-s-k-c-h-a-u-n-t-e-l Okay, so Melanie, the first bit of advice that I have for you is you don't want to share all of your business, whatever's going on with you and your husband to everybody and their mama, okay? There's lots of reasons for why you wouldn't want to do that. The first thing is the Bible says to seek wise counsel. And that means that when you are asking for advice, make sure that the person that you're asking advice from or that you're sharing information with is wise. Wisdom is from God. If you understand that, then the wise counsel that you will seek will be from Christians. And that Christian advice that you would seek would be from people who you would respect, love, and trust, okay? All of those things are very important, okay? And I hope that I can provide you with some wise counsel here. When you give information about your relationship to other people, they start to judge your relationship and they start to pour into you information and that can become overwhelming and it can affect the way that you might behave with your spouse. It may be a good or a bad thing. Also, when you uh, communicate bad things that, or things that may appear bad to someone else outside of your relationship, when you share information with that person, they may hold a grudge against your spouse, especially if it's someone who is very close with you, who um, has had a relationship with you, for example, your entire life, someone very close in your family or a friend, then they'll hold that grudge against your husband. So once you have forgiven him and you have moved on and you have forgotten, they still hold that against him. And that will cause more issues for you and for him in the future. Next thing. You want to listen, and when you listen, um, I don't just mean with your ears. I mean with your eyes, I mean with your spirit, because a lot of things that are communicated are not communicated verbally. If you don't pay attention to the nonverbal things, and as what I call them normally here is nonverbal cues, um, you're missing most of the puzzle. So you have to look and you have to listen, okay, to what you're seeing, what you're feeling, and what you're hearing. And you have to understand the difference between a problem and the symptom of a problem. That's a whole nother video within itself. But you really have to pay attention to what the real root of the problem is and what might be causing the argument. Next thing you got to think about is you have to wait sometimes in relationships we want to jump and we want to say and we want to scream and we want to just get whatever we have off our chest off our chest but sometimes it's not the right time there are those scriptures that talk about there's a time for everything and if you can if you can understand that then all of the decisions that you make will align and peace can come. But if you are so upset and you just express yourself in frustration and, and the pain that you're feeling, you just project it and you don't wait until it's the right time, that can have detrimental effects on your relationship. 
So what I would recommend for you to do is listen, wait, and watch what you say and who you say it to. The, the power of the tongue is a very strong thing and that's talked about all in Romans chapter 8. I hope this helps, Melanie. If you guys have questions, as always, please feel free to email me at ashantelgmail.com. That is A-S-K-C-H-A-U-N-T-E-L. Do not forget to log on to my website for more information. You can contact me there with your questions at ashantel.com. And if you are not a part of my mom community, Savvy Social Moms, you got to check that out as well on ashantel.com. I love you guys so much, and I hope to see you very soon. Hugs and kisses. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Like, you're supposed to be his happy place when he comes home at the